So welcome to Films of Blaze, I guess. So, so when you did For the Sake of Old Times, did, did you set out to make it a documentary or what was what were you looking at this to do? Because it's labeled as both a documentary and music video from the NPR video. So it doesn't fit neatly into one of these categories, documentary, music video, short film. And I think when we were making the piece, we, we just thought of it more like a community art project, a collaboration with community singers. Um, it was our hope that it would be a symbol of the year. Um, one of the visual motifs in the film are uh, these monuments. Mm -hmm. And so in a way, the film is a monument in and of itself. Um, and our, our intention in making the piece was to think about all this reckoning uh, that was happening in 2020, but, but start to reimagine um, in these big cultural shifts that we're all living through. How do we reimagine things? And um, in this case, we were reimagining this traditional song, Old Lang Syne, so a traditional folk song. Um, and so taking this idea of uh, revisiting things that we think we know, in this case, this Happy New Year's Eve song, um, more than a little like to reimagine it against the backdrop of 2020. Which now, when did you start the production of this film? Because obviously it was released to YouTube on December 31st. So like, was that intentional? And um, when did you start production on this? Because like you'd have to be in the middle of the year to know, well, you gotta make a film about reflective about 2020. Yeah, so we, we actually um, filmed this piece in, in December of 2020. So um, part of that, part of doing it as late as we could in the year was um, we didn't know if it was gonna be you know, safe enough to get people together in a room. You know, at that time, we were all looking month to month, you know, is, are we in a lull of COVID or cases spiking? And, and we just felt like um, the longer we could wait, maybe the better our chances would be. So um, we waited until the last minute and weren't able to do any rehearsals. So we got together um, on, I believe, the first or second Saturday of December. And then, yeah, the plan from the beginning was to try to release it um, as close to the end of the year as possible. So um, it was an idea that kind of predated a lot of what happened during 2020. And it gave it a lot more, um, it, it, it obviously responded to the headlines. It responded to COVID, it responded to Black Lives Matter and George Floyd and um, certainly the monument, the Confederate monument being removed from Birmingham. So. The idea um, sort of predated some of those things, but it, it gave it a lot more purpose in life once we actually got around to filming it. And so I'm, I'm really grateful that we waited. Um, it's, it's been kind of a lesson to me of, um, you know, sometimes your, your passion projects or your personal projects, you mm -hmm. feel like you've left them on the shelf, but they, they sort of find their way out at the right time. And this was the case, just to let it happen naturally and be patient with it. And, and um, a lot of things lined up really well for it. Which, um, Auld Lang Syne, I was going to ask you about that, was, and about the Birmingham church. You, you put this on. Were those ideas from the beginning or did those gradually come in? Yeah, so um, originally we were thinking um, that we would do, the, and this is, this is when the idea um, you know, we, we had actually tried to pursue this idea earlier, like before 2020, and um, was thinking about doing this at uh, the 16th Street Baptist Church uh, in the Civil Rights District, or maybe the, um, the Bethel Church, which also has civil rights history. And once things got so intense um, during 2020, it seemed maybe more fitting to set it out of, at this place in Avondale which had been a white church historically and had, um, had refused um, black visitors seats during the civil rights movement. And so, yeah, it definitely, um, the tone sort of shifted once we, 
once we changed that location. And um, uh, again, I'm glad we did. I'm glad that we, um, you know, didn't try to rush it or force it to be um, another site. And that sort of historic subtext, I think, comes through. And I think it came through for the singers, too. I think when they were aware of that history, it, it made it more meaningful for them. And Auld Lang Syne, was that like from the get go? That was because. So that was from the very beginning, you knew? Yeah, that, that song was always part of it. Um, it just, um, I don't know what it, what, it's, what it is about that song for me, but it's, you know, it's always kind of talked about as the song that everybody knows, but no one knows what it means. And I like the idea of this. Um, sorry, did you, have a, did you have a question? No, yeah, I was about to say like, yeah, I didn't even know how to pronounce it before. before yeah, right. Sure, sure. for this. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's, uh, you know, yeah, traditional Scottish folk song. Um, I liked it because it is a kind of community. The song itself is sort of a community tapestry. Different people have added verses over the years. Um, the origin of it is sort of murky. And, and yet here it is today. Um, this song that we all sort of communally take part in without really thinking about what it means mm -hmm. or thinking about what this expression is. And so um, I also like the idea of taking this, um, you know, this sort of traditional, you know, uh, white song, this like Scottish white folk song and sort of reimagining it from black fingers and giving it the sort of Southern gospel um, like vocal treatment um to kind of make you reinterpret the song and i think when you do that some of the song's themes start to come alive in interesting ways um you know the song starts with this rhetorical question of should should old times be forgotten um and that to me is also central to this to our reflection on 2020 you know what do we do with the trauma that we lived through what do we do with the memories of 2020 and um you know our human tendency i believe is to rush forward and just to look ahead to better days but i think that 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 can do a disservice to a lot of the lessons and a lot of the painful um lessons that we had to you know experience in 2020 so i think the song works as a, as a really good lens for the year and um you know again kind of reimagining the song and more of a reflective almost sorrowful way that was what we were trying to do in the arrangement of it now i also have to ask um how did you manage to um so so you said that what initially it initially spurred, the initial idea for this sparked before 2020 that's right so what was like the original plan for this film was it just supposed to be so this would have been pre-pandemic, I'm guessing, too. That's right. And pre-George Floyd protests, pre- Yeah, I mean, it was all, it always came out of, um, <clears throat> it, it had always come out of the, like, back, the Black Lives Matter um, movement and that, mm -hmm. and that sort of, uh, you know, the racial tension that we, we found ourselves in the last few years. So, yeah, even though it was, it predated 2020, it seemed like every year, um, you know, probably after Ferguson um, is when I, we first, I first started thinking about this, this concept, but, you know, every year um, we're, we're unfortunately reminded of, um, of the, the struggle for justice. And so it was, it was always about taking this song and, putting it into the backdrop of, you know, civil rights struggles. And it's just, it all sort of came to a head in 2020. And, um, you know, that gave us even, a, you know, I think 2020, especially with the, what happened in Birmingham with uh, the removal of the Confederate monument in Lynn Park, it made it a lot more relevant and close to home. And I also wanted to talk about the singers themselves. I know Eloise Gaffney was in there, was, was part of the group. How did you gather these singers? Because like, like, did you gather like, you know, a choir or did you gather? 
Yeah, so um, it wasn't it wasn't easy to find singers during 2020 because most uh, formal choirs weren't doing live performances. They weren't doing practice rehearsals. Um, fortunately, I found a few sources through through Miles College, through the I believe one of the choir directors at UAB actually, and started kind of grassroots sourcing singers and singers who knew singers. So this group of people, they had never sung together before. They're not a professional like trained group collectively, which again, I think makes it feel more like a community response. Um, you know, it was, it was beautiful that we had like the mother son pair. Um, and then, yeah, Miss, Miss Gaffney. So it's, um, it really did reflect the community and we were really fortunate to be able to pull people in who were willing to do this despite all the, the COVID risk at that time. Right, and um, actually the mother son thing is why I didn't see it as a documentary and I saw it more as a reflection kind of thing because mm -hmm. he seemed to be reflecting what we're supposed to and we should be all thinking. So mm -hmm. I always thought mm -hmm. it was like, you know, his personal reflection, mm -hmm. right? And then, but then obviously, so that's why I didn't think it was like a documentary or I really didn't think it was a music video. Yeah, I mean, we, um, you know, I, 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 you know, pull those sort of narrative things out and, and enjoy that kind of, uh, um, you know, the, the symbolism of, you know, knowing that, knowing that that first singer is the first, is the same age as the, um, some of the girls who died in the 16th Street Baptist Church bombing, um, you know, it's that the sort of narrative elements to me come through. Um, you know, yeah, in the end, when you sort of see him in this empty sanctuary, you know, you can imagine um, that you can sort of interpret that as, you know, what are we passing on to this generation? Um, what is the role of that generation? How do they draw on the ancestors, um, progress of the past? Um, how can we um, leave our community better than we found it? So I do like that sort of intergenerational element there. And that's why we wanted to end the, end the film, begin and end the film with the, the young person. And one of my last two questions is, how did, how did um, Eloise Gaffney get involved? Because she was she was a veteran who was in the civil rights movement in the 60s that's right that's right yeah so she was um she was uh, an activist she was um you know arrested in alabama for her for her work in the civil rights movement um you know it was uh it was just one of those kind of fateful things to be honest like we we had a, a person um one of the other singers said hey there's this this part, you know, this older person in our church who was in the movement, um, could she come out and be part of this? And we're like, absolutely. So it wasn't that we were, you know, trying to typecast or seek that person. It just, um, it, it turned out that she, right. she was a singer. And I think it also shows that these, a lot of these folks are still here living in our community. And it's just amazing, an amazing resource that we don't, don't often think about. And then... My last question for you is, do you have any closing thoughts about this film? Um, sure. I mean, I think that the, the sentiment of this film of what do we take forward? What do we leave behind? How do we choose? Um, I think that that's something that is relevant in 2021, will be relevant next year. Um, I do see it as a as a timeless piece, even though we rooted it in 2020. Um, like I mentioned earlier, unfortunately, these um, these themes of um, you know America kind of wrestling with itself and trying to strive to its higher ideals that um, that theme and that tension isn't going away. And so I think that we're going to continue to be coming back to these questions. Um, and so I would just I think it's a piece of that that people can revisit um, and 
to me, it also, it helps me kind of mark time um, thinking about the new year. Um, what did we, what did we gain and what did we lose? And I think mm-hmm. that that's, that continual self-reflection, both personally and as a nation, I, I think is important. Okay, well, thank you. All right. Thank Have you. Have a good day. All right, I appreciate it. Thank you.